When you're an astronaut in space, it is not a good idea to take off your helmet. Good morning, students. I'm Mr. Boscarini, and for our unit on understanding contact and non-contact forces, today we're going to explore pressure in gases. So, in the previous lessons, we have seen how we can find the pressure applied on a solid surface. We have introduced the formula for pressure, so see how we can find the pressure if you know the force applied and the area over that force is exerted. In class, we have discussed pressure in liquids. Today, we're going to complete this uh, investigation on pressure looking at pressure in gases. So, in the picture here, you see um, the first man ever to do a spacewalk. Um, and what, what do we know? Uh, if you look at movies and you see sometimes in uh, science fiction movies, uh, astronauts having to take off their helmets while they're in deep space or uh, on a planet that doesn't have an atmosphere. And you might have seen the just the head of this astro just, you know, uh, inflating and explode. Now, uh, that doesn't happen, uh, just to assure you. First of all, because our heads are not balloons, at least not, not most of our heads are not balloons. Our skin is elastic, but not to that degree. But of course, uh, taking off your helmet when you're in space or when you're in, uh, um, in an air where there's no atmosphere, it's a really bad idea. And today we're going to see why. But first of all, we need to understand how we make pressure in gases. Now, you know, gas is made like everything around us, it's made of molecules. But the difference between liquid, solid, and gas is that in gases, these molecules are not bound together. They're free to move randomly in every direction. Now, just imagine you have a container like a balloon, okay, as you can see here in the picture, that is filled with air. So that air is a gas, is made of molecules. These air molecules are moving around randomly. And what happens? Uh, from time to time, they'll bump into uh, the surface, the inner surface of the balloon. The force of the impact of these molecules against uh, the walls, so to speak, of our balloon is what then causes the pressure. So we have the force of the impact of these molecules which are zooming around uh, um, inside our balloon. They're hitting the walls of the, of the balloon and that applies a pressure. Of course, if you have a balloon in any, in any given state, like this one, what does it mean? We mean we have some molecules which are pressing here, but of course, if you have a balloon in normal um, condition, you will also have other molecules outside which are also hitting at the walls of the balloon. And this uh, pressure from inside and pressure from the outside, there must be an equilibrium if the balloon has to keep its shape. And this will be very, very important in the next part of this lesson. See what happens if this equilibrium, this balancing between the pressure inside and the pressure outside is broken. Which brings us to the question, how do we actually inflate a balloon? So let's see it together. So let's imagine I have a balloon. I want to inflate it. You know, the usual way is to blow some air inside the balloon. So let's do that. Okay, and here is our balloon. So let's rethink again of what we did. I blew air inside. So what did I do? I added more air molecules inside here. More air molecules means, in general, means more air molecules which are hitting the walls of this balloon, which means I'm increasing the pressure of inside the balloon. So at that point, the pressure inside was bigger than the pressure outside. That allowed the balloon to expand until there was a new equilibrium, okay, between the pressure. Remember, pressure depends on the surface. So as I, as, uh, I increase the size of a balloon, I'm increasing the area over which these same molecules, the same I had 
when I was um, when the balloon was inflating um, are applied on, on, on the surface so the pressure is decreasing until it reaches a new equilibrium with a pressure outside which is always the same is what we call atmospheric pressure okay so this is how we inflate the balloon at least this is one way we can inflate a balloon but let's see if there's another way in which we can inflate a balloon so now i'll take this strange contraption Let, let's see how it is this is a glass container where i fitted a balloon here as you can see okay but what is it really important for what we're going to see in a few seconds is that this container is not a real bottle i mean it's not a usual bottle in the sense that it has an open on the top but also an opening at the bottom okay this will be very important for what you're going to see so let's redo what it did before i'm going to blow some air inside the balloon and let's see what happens okay oh. Again, okay, that was better. Okay, now as you can see, I'm blocking the air coming back in. Why this? Because as the balloon was inflated, what happened? It pushed out the air molecules around, and uh, what happens right now is that inside the um, inside this uh, jar i have less pressure than outside so it's reaching again a new equilibrium and what will happen and by the way do you notice i'm not i'm not closing the top of the of a balloon but now what happens if i take my hand off the balloon will go back to its original shape but let's see so that was one way, but there's another way to inflate this balloon. As you might notice, in this case, I didn't blow the air from a small opening up here. I sucked out the air from this opening here. So what I did in this case, I didn't increase the pressure inside the balloon, I decrease the pressure outside the balloon. Uh, basically, what does this mean? By the way, let's see what hap happens if I take my hand away. Surprising. So, by the way, one, one way you can inflate a balloon is actually if you tie it, even if it's deflated, like right now, if I tie a knot, and if I put this in, a vacuum jar so into a container where I then I suck the air out this balloon will inflate but not because I'm increasing the pressure inside but I'm decreasing the pressure outside which is exactly what happens when you're an astronaut you're wearing your helmet and you take that helmet off all of a sudden you're not increasing the pressure inside you you're decreasing the pressure outside um, Again, as I said, our heads are not balloons. Our head will not inflate and explode eventually. It will inflate a little bit because our skin is to some degree elastic, but the main effect will be actually to change something in our body, which will make it really, really uncomfortable. So just to summarize what we have seen so far about pressure and gases. We saw by inflating the balloon that I can increase pressure in gas by increasing the number of molecules. I'm blowing more air inside. I will, I will make the pressure inside this balloon bigger. Or I can decrease the volume of the gas. And this you can, you can try it yourself again if you have an inflated balloon and you try to press it and you feel like, ah, it's getting tighter and it's getting more difficult. You can you do it with any kind of football, basketball. If you try to squeeze it, remember inside there's air. And what you're doing, you're decreasing the volume by squeezing it. And it becomes harder and harder to squeeze because you're increasing the pressure inside that balloon. By the, by the way, for instance, if you do this with a, um, a normal party balloon, this is one way to make it pop. 
or another thing you can do is to heat up the gas. And why will this affect our balloon? Because remember, the pressure is due to the movement, the zooming around of the molecules, and the speed at which these molecules move depends on their temperature. So if you increase the temperature of a gas, the molecule will start zooming faster, which means in turn they will hit the walls of your container at a higher speed, which will mean they will um, apply a bigger force, and a bigger force means a bigger pressure. Let's finish this lesson about pressure in gases actually talking about liquids. So here we have our favorite, unfortunately former president of the United States, uh, Barack Obama, drinking through a straw. And drinking through a straw is a great example of the use of atmospheric pressure or lack of. So I'm not comparing myself to Obama, of course, but let's imagine I have my cup of water and this time I have a plastic straw, which hopefully will get uh, outlawed very soon. So. You know, in order to drink, I need to suck. But you might think, I'm not really sucking in the water. I'm sucking in the air. So why is the liquid coming out the straw? And it's, again, all a matter of pressure or actually difference in pressure. Let me explain. Now, let's make a very, very quick drawing of this situation. So let's imagine... We have our cup here, okay, it's a very rough drawing of a cup, and let's imagine this is the surface of a liquid, okay, and, and this is our straw, which for our benefit I'll try to make it cylindrical, okay, so when we don't do anything, uh, the level of a liquid inside the straw will be level with the level of a liquid outside the straw. And this is because this surface is free, this surface is free. So right now, on this liquid, we have air pressing down. We have it here, here. And this pressure is all the same. It's, it's equal here, here, and it's the same inside the straw, okay? But what happens when I start to suck in through the straw? What I'm doing effectively, I am decreasing the pressure here. So we have the pressure from the air, which is still there outside the straw, but inside uh, the equilibrium is broken because there's no, more, there's no more air pressing down here. So what happens, this pressure becomes, uh, wins over the pressure here. So the water is pushed down, or whatever liquid I'm trying to, and the liquid is going up. Okay? It's all a matter of change in pressure. Now, um, I hope in class we'll have a chance to see other examples of pressure in gases. With, with this video, we're finishing this topic of contact and non-contact force. Next topic will be magnetism, electricity. But today, that's all. Goodbye from Mr. Boscarini.